What's up, everybody? So today I thought I'd uh, talk a little bit about a uh, sexy little uh, piece of technology uh, that I've been playing around with for the last couple of months. Uh, and the technology in question is magneto-optical discs. Uh, now, magneto-optical discs is probably something that you uh, are maybe familiar with. Uh, from uh, another incarnation of it called the Minidisc, uh, which was the only incarnation of it that had kind of uh, sort of a, uh, what do you call it? It was widespread throughout the world. Uh, but in this incarnation of it, uh, it really only was widespread in Japan. Now, my familiarity with this uh, technology kind of started with the Resident Evil series, of all things. The very first one, at some point you could find a little thing called an MO disc with some data on it. Now, at the time, I thought it was some sort of fanciful piece of technology that uh, they, they had just made up for the game. And But several years later, when I kind of... Uh, started uh, looking into like various uh, obsolete uh, computer storage uh, formats i found out that the mo disk actually existed it was a thing and uh, in the west it only really existed through the uh, the next step uh, computer platform which was the uh, the workstation platform that Steve Jobs worked on after he left uh, Apple. And the next step technology later became a part of the OS X operating system when Steve Jobs returned to Apple. Uh, but the very first uh, next step workstation machines, I believe, they had as their default drive a uh, the 120 megabyte uh, MO disk, kind of like this. This is a later incarnation with 230 megabyte uh, storage capacity. Now, the very first ones, the 121, which were cutting edge at the time, they launched in the mid 80s with the first next step, and they were notorious for being very finicky and uh, the, the drives tend to break down and, and people just generally were not very uh, uh, they didn't like them very much and the next step uh, workstation computer platform really was a, a very niche thing so in the west mo discs never really caught on but in japan they did c catch on and so uh, for the next 20 years the hardware was uh, refined upon and it became much more reliable and, uh, and 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 higher capacity discs started coming out now the very first one i believe was 120 then you had the 230 megabyte which i have here then there was a um, let me see a 640 megabyte version and also there was a one gigabyte or over one gigabyte version model as well. And I think those were the last ones that were made up uh, until the year 2000s. So the reason why I started uh, to invest in this technology was because I have a little problem. Well, I think this technology is really sexy. I have kind of a, I have an obsession with magneto optical discs because they're, they're just so exotic. Uh, they kind of mix uh, features from both CD-ROMs and hard drives because they have a magnetic component as well as a laser component. So the way they work is that uh, a laser heats up the, the disc from one side and uh, then the magnet can uh, can change the property of the, of that size once once it has been heated up to a certain temperature, and then uh, and and through that it can store information. Then later that information can be read using a laser, kind of like a CD. So uh, 
it's a very strange kind of technology but uh, you know I need a little bit more than just just exotic sexiness uh, for me to invest in it so I have a problem which is I, I I need to be able to transfer files to and from an x68000 uh, via a regular PC in a, in, in a um, in a way that that is easy now ordinarily what you would do is you would you would install a flash hard drive inside your x68000 and then you would just take the flash card out and put it in your pc and and, and do whatever you want with it what i did with my machine was that i installed the flash drive inside of the uh, my compact and the compact is very very difficult to deassemble and get to that flash drive so basically when I did that uh, the idea was I would never take it out uh, and in hindsight that wasn't so smart even though it was an elegant solution because then I wouldn't have anything hanging outside of the machine it would be a self-contained thing uh, unfortunately that also meant that to upgrade the files or transfer new files onto that machine would be very difficult unless I had some sort of a um, a way to transfer a lot of files very fast onto it so my first idea was that I would get a, a CD drive an external uh, SCSI uh, CD drive something like this uh, this is area uh, appropriate uh, I think maybe no yeah this is from the 90s anyway so you can see this is 20 speed uh, but it's got a SCSI uh, interface so this is very easy to hook up to the uh, to an X68000. You just get the appropriate cable. You you hook it up uh, to the back of it, and then you you just load up the the proper drivers, and this thing will just work. Now, unfortunately, what I discovered about these and what I have forgotten was that uh, CD technology or CD writing technology kind of came in 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 waves, and the very last wave was the CDRW. Now, I don't like to write CDRs just for file transfers because that is a, a, a giant waste of a CD just, just to burn one for, for transferring a few files, especially in, the, in this day and age where uh, like getting a hold of a CDR, it, it's, it's, not, it's not that easy. It's not as easy as it used to be because, well, nobody uses them anymore. So CDRs are precious, but I do have a lot of CDRWs and what my, the idea was that I would write the discs and since those are rewritable, it, it, it didn't matter. I could just write uh, in, in the future some other WAV files and erase the old ones. This model though, and I suspect all the external SCSI uh, CD drives, they cannot write or they cannot read CDRWs. So this idea was bust. And uh, so uh, my next idea was I'll just go with ML disks. I mean, uh, these surely will work uh, because I know uh, I've read some people hooking up ML disks to their x68000s and transferring files. And I also knew that there were uh, MO uh, drives for PCs. So this seemed like the way to go. So. Uh, what I found out is that you cannot actually get a, a, an MO drive that has an easy way to access a, a modern PC and an old-fashioned PC at the same time. Old-fashioned PCs use uh, SCSI and new modern PCs obviously use USB. So what you need to do is you need to get two different drives one to interface with the old uh, machines this is a SCSI uh, MO drive and this is a, a modern one so you can see the size difference here this is a much newer device uh, both of these can read up to 640 megabytes MO disks unfortunately all the MO disks I have are uh, maximum 230 megabytes so that's the maximum that I can read and write but these are 640 megabyte capable now this sleek little unit uh, is the uh, is for interfacing with the, uh, with the modern PCs as I said uh, very easy to use device 
it's got a mini USB here. You just hook it up to your PC and put in the disks and it just shows up on your desktop and you can transfer files over to, uh, to the disk, uh, format it, do whatever you want. Very simple. This one though, uh, it's a little bit more complicated. Now the reason why I went with this model specifically is because the same reason that I went with this one specifically is because the color scheme, I think, kind of complements my uh, uh, XVI Compact um, X68000. I really care about aesthetics and stuff like that, so I, I had to go through like hundreds of listings to find the ones that I thought, okay, this one will look sleek. Now, unfortunately, the, because I care more about aesthetics than function, uh, I ended up with this machine that is not, I've subsequently found out, not the most ideal unit to go uh, for this purpose. This one is a little bit finicky, uh, I've found out. Now, there is no way of knowing whether the, the, uh, the, the specific model that you're going to get is going to work or not, unless someone else has tested it with an X68000 and knows that it will work flawlessly. So that's my uh, suggestion for you. Find someone on the internet who, who will vouch for one specific model. And if you don't care about the looks, just buy that one. Uh, so anyway, this one interfaces with the X68000 through a SCSI uh, cable, just like with a CD drive. Just like with a CD drive, you need some drivers for this to work. It will not just work out of the, uh, out of the box. There is a disc called the, uh, the Master Disc by IDIS. It has all the drivers you need for, for, to make this function. And uh, the idea is that you transfer files from your PC to an MO disk using this. And then you, uh, you insert it into this and you read it on your X68000. Uh, now, I found out a few things. It's not as easy and elegant as I had anticipated. Now, there are several Problem. Okay, so let's start by sticking a uh, MO disk into the drive and uh, hooking it up to a, uh, a computer, a modern computer. So what happens is it, uh, it starts reading the disk and it shows up on your desktop. Now I'm using Windows, uh, even though I'm using a Mac computer because it's just a little bit easier to transfer files, especially to old formats, because Windows, as soon as you put in a external disk, it starts to write, I mean, the Macintosh, Mac OS, it starts writing all sorts of files onto it, and, and you don't want that. Uh, so, uh, as you can see, I've already transferred some files into this disk, and this disk in here, it is fat formatted and it needs to be fat formatted if you just want to drag and drop files uh, from a, a modern computer onto it uh, so uh, let's transfer this file here for example to the MO and there it is now it's Probably not a good idea for it to have a space in the name. So we're going to change the name here. And then we're just going to eject it. And we're going to stick it in the external SCSI drive for the X68000. And then just turn on the machine. Now what you'll need is a some sort of a driver that can enable a human 68K to uh, read MO drives or uh, access them. And for that purpose, right now I'm booting off of a, a disk image that is called the master disk. This is the version three. And the line you need to uh, pay attention to is this one. This is the uh, SCSI uh, driver. As you can see, you have to specify an ID. This has to correspond to the ID, uh, SCSI ID of your uh, MO drive. In my case, it is three. So I've set it to that. 
and if you do that you can access the drive uh, I believe it is drive C right now now as you can see we get some uh, strange errors when we try to actually read uh, the disk now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say ignore to this a couple of times and eventually it's going to show me the files that are here now the reason why it's doing this I have not found out but it is somehow related to the fact that this is fast formatted and I've transferred the files using a Windows machine uh, actually I don't think the Windows machine thing is related I think it's more just the fact that this is a fat uh, formatted disk it may be related to my specific external MO drive it might not be but I've discovered that there's a lot of really glitchy thing that happens when you transfer a file uh, to a fat, a fat uh, formatted uh, MO disk and try to read it in an x68000 so that's not it's far from the optimal way to do it now let's take a look at that file that we just copied over There we go, and this is uh, this is just something I was working on for a while. Uh, I played through every single uh, game that I could find on the various uh, disk hard disk images for the X68000, and I just wrote something down about the games, like what genre it is, whether I think it is a good game or not, and stuff like that. So anyway, this is the by far the easiest, but uh, not the most problem-free uh, way of uh, of transferring files to the x68000 now so you can see every time you uh, you write the directory command you have to go through this circus of trying uh, of pressing ignore and one thing you'll notice is right here for example you can see uh, this was a long file name in Windows and even though human 68k does support long file names it does not support long file names in the same way that windows does so human 68k has its own way of uh, handling th that so if you have a long file name and you try to copy it from a windows machine to an mo disk uh, windows will uh, handle that file name as in the way that windows does and human 68k does not understand that so if you want, like, want to transfer some files, uh, I've noticed from the X68000, and if they contain Japanese characters or are longer than the 8.3 uh, uh, standard for, uh, for DOS computers, uh, the names will just get garbled and uh, it will be a mess. So uh, if, if there is a game that has long file names and it, uh, it tries to read those files, the game is just not going to work. So you have to be careful of that. And that's why I suggest to only do this for uh, like simple file transfers. Do not try and copy an entire uh, folder uh, of like games or, or utilities or whatever. Uh, if you want to do that, the best way to do it, I found out after some trial and error, is you... Uh, you should zip the files inside an emulator, a human 68k, uh, I mean x68000 emulator, in human 68k, compress them, then copy the file over to a Windows machine uh, by just dragging it out from a, uh, a virtual uh, hard drive uh, editing tool. Uh, then copy that single zip file over to the MO disk and transfer it over to your uh, uh, actual machine and unzip it then because in that way uh, nothing can go wrong all the file names inside the zip the uh, windows will, uh, will not do anything about that because they're just a single binary file and uh, once you uncompress it on human 68k because you compressed it on a human 68k uh, everything's just uh, dandy 
So that's one of the ways to do it, uh, to avoid any problems at all. And another way to do it is, uh, I haven't tested this, but in theory, you could mount a virtual MO disk to an emulator, copy all the files you want over to that, and then write that image file to the uh, MO disk using a, a software that is called Disk Image, I think. I don't forget. I forget. There's a, uh, there, it's the same software you use to write like hard disk images to the uh, compact flash uh, uh, to SCSI uh, hard disk things that people use. Now, one other fun thing you can do with MO drives is uh, you can install a driver into the SRAM of, uh, of your x68000 machine so that you no longer actually need, in theory, to, uh, to boot off of a disk with the drivers installed. The, the drivers will be uh, in the SRAM, and as long as the SRAM is not cleared because uh, the, the battery ran out, uh, you, you should be able to boot off of an MO disk. Now, there are some caveats to this. First of all, the MO disk that you use has to be uh, formatted in the human 68K format, so, uh, so you can't mount it in the Windows machine and, and do stuff with it. I've created one here. Unfortunately, I can't get my machine to boot off of that, even though it should be able to. I think it has something to do with the, uh, with the uh, external drive that I use. It, it's just, uh, it's a little bit flaky. So what I have to do is I have to press a key on the keyboard when I boot, and then I get this menu, and then I can choose uh, like uh, ID3. And uh, in a few seconds, it, it should boot off of that MO drive. You can see it found it and now it's booting off of it. And basically the MO drive now is just like a external hard drive. Okay, so here we are in uh, human 68K booted off of an X, uh, I mean a MO disk. Now the driver you want to use is called uh, Excellent 30. And Excellent 30 is, it's a set of drivers that are written for a CPU accelerator. But among the functionalities of that driver is the ability to be able to boot off of a SCSI or SASI external MO drive. So you need to find that somewhere. I had to look a little bit for it, but eventually I tracked it down. There are several versions of it. You have to find the correct one and install it. And once you do, everything should just work. Now, as I said, for mine, everything doesn't just work. It doesn't automatically boot off of an MO disk, but I've seen other people be able to do that. So that's probably related to the specific drive that I have. And since I don't know why mine uh, behaves the way it does, I have really no uh, advice to offer you as to how to uh, choose a, an external drive. You're just gonna have to uh, pick one and, and experiment. Now, you really can't tell any difference between uh, using an external MO drive or uh, using an uh, external hard drive. The only real difference is the transfer speed. Uh, MO drives are very, very slow. And in my opinion, that's not really a bad thing thing. I mean, for, for playing a single game, you're hardly going to notice any difference at all. And I don't really mind just a little bit of a waiting time. Because uh, that's, because you're gonna, it's more authentic that way. I mean, it's a little bit more reminiscent of, uh, of like, for example, playing uh, off of a floppy drive. Let me give you an example here. Let's go into games too. Now uh, this thing is a little bit unresponsive when uh, booting off of a MO drive. I'm not sure why, but these are just the kind of things you're gonna have to live with. Now notice here, I think you're gonna be able to listen to the like the startup music a little bit longer when playing uh, Dracula than you would if you would launch off of a uh, hard drive. Well, not that much, just maybe one or two seconds longer. Anyway, as you can see, 
works just like a hard drive. It's uh, and you know if if you can find a, a very cheap uh, external MO drive, a SCSI one, uh, it might be a viable way to save a few bucks and use that instead of uh, a SCSI to SD uh, solution. But you know you have to be aware that there are drawbacks. Now, the reason why I use mine is because my uh, My hard drive is installed inside the compact here and uh, getting it out is a pain in the ass so I'm never going to do that and thus whenever I need to transfer a large amount of uh, data to it or uh, get it data out uh, and I don't want to use the floppies because they're a little bit flaky the MO drive is a viable way to do that and also I think uh, MO's uh, they're, uh, it's a sexy technology I just like it it's uh, uh, I wanted to play around with it and now I have it's uh, I really like it I have to be honest something retro uh, cool uh, retro futuristic cool about the uh, the discs themselves uh, I mean it's kind of like a CD inside a caddy uh, yeah, yeah very nice piece of technology anywho this is just for the uh, ultra nerdy people will enjoy stuff like this otherwise just stick to uh, <laughs> the uh, an external uh, I mean a uh, SCSI to SD that's by far the easiest solution uh, anywho uh, well I, I did skip over a lot of things because I uh, you know these are not really these videos are not really meant to be a tutorial for how you're supposed to set these things up uh, you're gonna have to do your own research and figure things out. Uh, I think that's part of the fun of, of a computer system like this. Uh, I honestly speaking don't really spend a lot of time using the computer as much as I do like just, just figuring things out and playing around with things. Uh, I find that stuff uh, really interesting so uh, hopefully you do as well. If you don't you're gonna find a the X68000 or, or any Japanese computer system uh, for that matter, you're gonna find them to be like incredibly frustrating because information is very hard to come by and it's like spread over like a lot of really obscure sources uh, around. Uh, so uh, yeah, don't be afraid to ask around on like uh, specialty forums uh, and, and Facebook groups. Uh, those are very good resources for figuring out stuff. Uh, and uh, other than that, just experiment, I guess. Anyway, guys, I think that's enough about MO discs. So uh, I'm going to uh, end the video here and uh, see you in the future.